Now let's see what other kinds of galaxies live in our cosmic zoo. Let's now get to the next type. Lenticular galaxies, classified as S0 or SB0, sit between the ellipticals and the spiral galaxies. They feature a significant disk, but without the prominent spiral arms of typical spiral galaxies. These galaxies must have either exhausted or lost most of their interstellar matter, which means there's little ongoing star formation. Even with that, they frequently display significant dust within the disk. The stellar content is principally aging stars, just like the elliptical galaxies. And despite these differences, lenticular and elliptical galaxies have roughly the same spectra. We categorize both as early-type galaxies. This early-type nomenclature comes from Hubble's mistaken assertion that galaxies evolved from ellipticals to spirals. We just keep the name because it sounds better than calling them tuning fork handle galaxies or left side of the diagram galaxies. Next, lenticular galaxies have some really unique characteristics. Their distinctiveness lies in the visible disk and prominent bulge components. They tend to have a higher bulge to disk ratio compared to typical spiral galaxies. And still yet they lack those spiral arm structures found in the late type galaxies. This bulge to disk ratio is a measure of how prominent the bulge is compared to the disk in terms of luminosity and apparent size. Some lenticulars may even exhibit a central bar, similar to barred spiral galaxies. Lenticulars are characterized by this central bulge component. A good way to describe them is that they look exactly like ellipticals but surrounded by a lightly dusty disk with a matching stellar population. And lenticulars also occupy a unique position in the Hubble sequence and, as such, are often viewed as a transitional state between spiral and elliptical galaxies. Their disks are usually completely featureless, which complicates classification when you compare them to spiral galaxies. Lenticular galaxies are subdivided into classes based on how much dust they have and whether or not they have a bar, and that creates sub-designations such as S01, S02, and 3 for those without a bar, and SB01, SB02, and SB03 for those with a bar. I'm really not going to go into those differences. That's for a much deeper course in galactic dynamics. Lenticular galaxies also share a lot of composition similarities with elliptical galaxies. Both are predominantly comprised of older, redder stars, and all stars within both of these types of galaxies are believed to exceed about a billion years in age. Interestingly, globular clusters are also more abundant in lenticular galaxies than in comparable spiral galaxies. Remember that the giant ellipticals always had huge numbers of them, which arose from the detritus of galactic mergers? Something similar may be going on with lenticulars. Next, these galaxies typically possess little or no molecular gas. This accounts for their lack of star formation and minimum hydrogen alpha and 21 centimeter emissions. H alpha is that bright pink glow of the Orion Nebula, and the 21 centimeter radiation is the spin flip transition of ultra cold isolated hydrogen atoms in vast clouds of gas. Both of these are absent in lenticular galaxies. But the counterpart that always comes along with these hydrogen spectral features, the cold dust, is present in significant quantities, and this is a big difference from the ellipticals. Lenticular galaxies also showcase a blend of kinematic properties from both spiral galaxies and elliptical galaxies due to the bulge and disk characteristics. The bulge shows a strong central velocity dispersion from the randomized orbits of billions and billions of stars. The disk, on the other hand, is rotationally similar to a rotating disk of a spiral galaxy. Because the spectra of ellipticals and lenticulars is very similar, and if the angular resolution is not excellent, these two types can be differentiated only by comparing the overall motions of the bulge and disk. While the bulge will give one spectral profile due to the Doppler shifts of the combined random motions, the disk will provide a different signature of organized rotation. This means spectral features will have different shapes for the same spectral absorption lines, and this is how they can be reliably told apart. All this about the appearance and kinematics of lenticular galaxies hint at some strange formation processes. The disk-like appearance hints at a faded spiral galaxy. This means the galaxy is basically used up and has run out of gas. But this is a bit odd because some lenticulars can be more luminous than their spiral counterparts, 
which tells us that this isn't the complete evolutionary history. Their origins are not well known, but potential formation scenarios include galaxy mergers or accretion events. The first would enhance stellar mass, and the second would cause the disk to grow. The faded spiral idea is supported by the absence of the gas, the presence of the dust, and the lack of recent star formation. Another idea is that tidal harassment from nearby galaxies may have transformed spirals into lenticulars by stripping off their gas due to ram pressure from a dense galactic halo. But there are numerous isolated lenticulars, so this isn't the most favored explanation. One of the strongest pieces of evidence comes from the lenticulars' adherence to what's called a modified Tully-Fisher relation. The Tully-Fisher relation is a well-established relationship between a spiral galaxy's rotation rate and its absolute magnitude. This relationship only applies to spirals. And the fact that lenticulars are seen to be brighter and redder than normal spirals on a comparative plot is strongly suggestive that lenticulars just have a lot more evolved red bright stars than spirals do. This would be expected if lenticulars are just old spirals that have used up their gas. This isn't the whole story, though. It doesn't really explain the excess of globular clusters. Also, we can't ignore the real effects of the sometimes fast motion of galaxies in their clusters, which can and would strip the gas from the galaxies. The origins of lenticulars are obviously an area of active research. So the lenticulars are a bridge between the ellipticals and the spirals on Hubble's tuning fork. And let's see what's up next in our cosmic tour, the spirals.